What is up guys, Carl Janko here with another episode of the Tackle Rat. Today we're gonna to be going over my two top winter tournament fishing baits. Let's get started. All right guys, so welcome back. Today I'm gonna to be talking about uh, my two baits that I would use if you guys are gonna be fishing tournaments in the winter. So I'm gonna kind of base this off of my experience, um, especially this early spring at Lake of the Ozarks where our water temperatures were anywhere from 30 to 40 degrees. And the first day of the tournament, we were actually running through skim ice. Uh, it was crazy crazy tournament but I learned a ton about fishing that's super cold water and this really is gonna apply to like your mid your mid to northern regions of America not really like Texas or Florida I've never been down to either of those places but those fish are a lot different you know they're southern strain fish and they really don't experience like a cold winter like we do in those uh, middle to northern parts of the country and it, it kind of shifts these fish into into their winter mode, uh, as many of you guys would call it. And I kind of want to go over how I like to fish for those fish uh, without being, you know, super slow and methodical and being able to cover a lot of water because that's very important in tournament fishing. You know, there's a big difference between, in my opinion, there's a big difference in between what I would throw fun fishing and what I would throw in a tournament uh, because a tournament you only have that short eight hour window to go and catch as many and as as big a fish as you can. And these two baits I definitely believe are the way to go in the winter. So uh, first things first, fishing winter, where you're generally gonna be fishing and where I kind of fish like at Lake of the Ozarks. So these, a lot of wintering fish will stage in deeper water, obviously. Uh, but there are gonna be a population of shallow fish, but mainly focusing on deep water and they're gonna be on vertical banks where you have uh, these you know, fluctuating temperatures in the winter, allow these fish to move up and down and uh, uh, you know, move in, in the water column up and down and allows them to move with the bait and move with the uh, water temperature and kind of adjust from there. So it gives them access, really quick access to deep and shallow water. And two really good ways to target these fish. The first one, is going to be the Alabama rig. So don't have any like swim baits on here right now, but uh, you know, it's very, very simple. In my opinion, winter fishing is very simple, uh, especially when you're in tournaments, you know, you want to cover water and this is a great way to do it because the Alabama rig um, obviously emulates a large school of bait fish, generally uh, some type of shad. And what happens in the winter, especially in your early spring, is you're going to have a large shad kill uh, depending on how harsh your winter is, you, you can have, you know, a small shad kill or a pretty large significant shad kill like we had on Lake of the Ozarks. Those fish are, are going to feed up. You know, there's a lot of mixed opinions on what the fishing is like after a shad kill. Some say it gets better, some say it gets worse, but I know that, uh, during a shad kill, you want to match the hatch and throwing an A-rig is a great way to represent a school of bait fish and it's it's a reaction bait so you know these fish you're you're fishing it by them they're not getting a lot of time to look at it and it uh it gets bit and really really uh shines in those colder months super popular bait when it when it comes to like your pre-spawn to spawn time of the year in the in that spring uh time of the year but also is just as expensive effective in the winter and you can catch fish on this a rig in 30 to 40 degrees of water even though it's a moving bait you can catch them in that super cold water i've seen it done you guys go look at lake of the ozarks uh the tournament results i guarantee you it, it's littered with guys throwing the a rig the guy that won actually was throwing an a rig and a big key with that is a live scope uh you know i'm not sure if you guys a lot of you guys may just be fishing ponds. You guys may just uh, be fish, maybe fishing out of the back of the boat like I am. But if you guys are fishing in the front of the boat, live scope is key in the winter. Helps you really dial in and, and target fish and gives you confidence to know that there are fish in the area that you're fishing. Because a lot of times winter can be frustrating, especially when you're fishing very slow. And being able to have live scope 
and you know they're fishing a lot of brush piles and being able to run your a-rig over those brush piles see how those fish are reacting and kind of vary your retrieve speeds with this a-rig i like to keep it uh you know mid mid to, like middle to slow retrieve with this i like to use a 795 for for this bigger a-rig this is a five this is a four blade five arm a-rig and if i'm running like these big swim bait heads i'll run it on a 795 if i'm throwing like guppy heads i'll put it on a lighter rod probably like 734 uh dobbins but that that is a very effective bait but um the one that i have a lot more experience with and personally a lot more confidence in in the winter is going to be a jerk bait so like i said we are we are trying to emulate especially in early 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 spring slash winter shad kill like i said we are trying to emulate shad and a jerk bait is a great way to imitate a dying shad and if you guys haven't ever seen a mega bass vision 110 in the water so what happens with this bait uh you know you you bring it down to where to the desired depth this is uh this is a plus one so it gets down there and when you pause it um a lot of times it'll either do a slow shimmy up or in in really good conditions it'll perfectly suspend or you can add lead strips and make it sink so there's a lot of different things you can do with this bait and all of them are great ways to imitate a uh, dying shad and fishing this very slow is key sometimes giving it up up to 10 seconds pause um, for this bait in the winter is is key and you know as far as colors keeping it very simple mega bass there are literally guys that will collect like 200 to 300 different colors of vision 110s but in my opinion uh, there's just a couple of simple colors you need like uh this m shad right here is a really popular color uh, i like to throw these these flashy colors more under your um your cloudy conditions and then when it gets sunny out you can pick up something like this right here. This is actually the color that Hank Cherry won the classic on. Um, I'm not sure on the exact name. I think it's like a spring reaction. I, I don't know. Someone can comment it down below. But uh, just, just a couple colors. Just have confidence in them. And then there's a couple different sizes. So we also have the Junior over here. And that's great for imitating like a Threadfin Shad. So there's, you know, there's Threadfin Shad and you have your bigger Gizzard Shad. And in my opinion, this is this regular size one. You're imitating more more uh, that gives Chad profile, but kind of just pay attention to those details. Look at what kind of bait you're around and adjust from there. And then you also have the regular divers uh, that'll cover anywhere. In my opinion, from five to ten, you can get them down deeper. As you can see here, I put a lead strip on this one to make it sink. Um, so you can you can fish that one all the way down. In my opinion, to like ten foot. And then if those fish are deeper. You can go with a plus one or a plus two. And these are also great options. You know, what to consider though, when you're when you're looking at these, don't just look at what depth you're fishing, but try to kind of pay attention to what area of those fish are in the water column, because a lot of these fish in the winter, they will suspend. So you may be fishing 10 feet of water, but those fish are in five. And so you still want to go with that regular, that regular diving uh, jerk bait to, to get that bait around those fish. So uh, kind of, you know, that's key, paying attention to those details and um, keeping it very simple. Just things you have confidence in because in winter, you're, it, it, you know, people can say, oh, you can go out there and catch 50, 60 fish. But the reality is winter fishing is very tough, but it's very rewarding when you're out there in cold weather catching fish. And uh, just keeping it simple, baits you have confidence in, not switching it up a whole lot. And especially in tournaments, you want to throw things that you have confidence in. So that's very key. Uh, but those are my two baits that I would throw if I was going to go out and fish a tournament in the winter. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. And thank you guys for watching another episode of The Tackle Rat. We'll see you.